Welcome back to Precalculus. Today we're going to talk about sets. And we need to talk about sets before intervals because we talk about intervals as sets. So, what is a set? A set is a collection of objects. So we've already talked about sets before. Uh, the natural numbers is a set of numbers. So how do we write sets? Well, we open it with a curly brace and then we write all of the elements inside. So one is a natural number, two is a natural number, three is a natural number, four, and that goes on to infinity. So one, two, three, four, this is the set of natural numbers. We close it with a curly brace. We can write it like that, or we can use something called set notation. And we can say, this is the set of x such that, and this bar right here is the bar that means such that. So this is the set of x under the following conditions. We're going to say x is a whole number. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on. And specifically, x is greater than or equal to 1. You can write that. So the set of x where x is a whole number and x is greater than or equal to 1. And this is going to generate this set. We're just using descriptive words instead of writing out each individual element. And it conveys the exact same meaning. So that's a set. Now how do we talk about objects in the set? Well, we actually refer to these objects as elements. And we have a nice operator that tells us whether or not an object is an element of a set or not. So for instance, if we have this set A, which will just give it the objects 2, 3, 4, and 5, we have this symbol here, this epsilon, which means is an element of. So if this 2 epsilon A, what it really means is 2 is an element of A, which means we can find 2 in the set. When we have this epsilon with a cross in it, what this means is not an element of A. So 6 is not in the set A. And what we can do is we can give this set some conditions. So for instance, we can say that x is going to be in this set A if um, x is between 2 and 5 and x is a whole number or x is an integer or something like that. So we can give conditions on these sets. So this 2, 3, 4, 5 set could be, we could write this in set builder notation. So we could say that A is equal to the set of X such that X is between 2 and 5 and X is in the set of integers. So we could write it like that. And that's another way of building this set A. So if you remember, this z right here is the integers. So we're saying, okay, this x has to be in the set of integers, and it has to be in the set between 2 and 5, or between the numbers 2 and 5. So it's a little bit of a complicated way of putting it, but they mean the same thing. And we'll get to this more specifically in just a moment, I think. Yes, just a moment. <laughs> So we have some operations we can do with sets, since talking about one set isn't super helpful. What we can do is we can take the union of two sets. And the union is, say we have a nice little Venn diagram here. We have two sets. One is A, one is B. Then A union B covers all of these objects, if it's an A or in B. So I have this written here. X is an A union B if x is in A or x is in B. So if s is 1, 2, 3, and t is 2 and 4, then what is s union t? Well, it's going to be everything in s and everything in t. So we can write that. 
We also, with sets, if we have the same element twice, we only write it once. So we don't need to write the 2 twice. So we know 2 is an S, so when we see it again in T, we don't need to worry about it when we use the union operator. It's redundant. So that's the union. The other operation we can do is we can take the intersection. So when we have A and we have a set B, the intersection is this area in the middle where they cross over. So for instance, X is going to be an A intersection B if X is an A and X is an B. And we use this upside down U, which we call cap. At least that's what it's called in LaTeX. You can call it intersection or cap. Cap is much more efficient. Some people say and. I say and sometimes. But that is the symbol we use for an intersection. So in the intersection, it just takes all of these similar elements. So for instance, what is the same between S and T? Well, we see this 2 in both of them. So S intersection T is just going to be the set containing 2. If we put out all these numbers in the Venn diagram here, we'd have it look like this. So we have 1, 2, and 3 in S, and we have 2 and 4 in T, and 2 happens to be the one crossing over. In fact, with the union before, we see that the union of these two sets is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that's the intersection and the union, and these two operations are very important for intervals, because when we talk about domains and ranges of functions, we need to know how to do these two operations in order to get the domains and ranges. So that'll be useful for chapter two. Let's do some practice here. You can take a look at these sets, try it out on your own, pause the video, and come back in a second for some answers. Okay, hopefully you were at least somewhat successful. A union B is going to be the union between the two sets. So it's everything in A plus everything in B. So A has 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and B has 4, 5, 6, and 7. We already have 4 and 5 in the set, so we won't write them again, but then we have 6 or 7. So A union B is just 1 through 7. What about A union C? Well, A has 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and C has 1, 5, and 9. We already have 1 and 5 written down, but we don't have 9, so we'll just put 9 in there. Okay, what about A intersection C? So what do A and C have in common? Well, they both have 1s, so that's good. They both have 5s, so that's good. So we have A intersection C is just 1 and 5. What about A intersection B intersection C? Well, this time we're looking for common elements between all three sets. So are th is there any element in all three sets? Well, yeah, this 5 is in A, 5 is in B, and 5 is in C. So A intersection B intersection C is just going to be the set containing 5. So that is sets. That's all you need to know for sets in pre-calculus. If you want to learn more about sets, check out Discrete Math 1 on my channel. And the very first few videos are on sets. We talk about subsets. We talk about power sets. We talk about uh, the operators, intersection, union, the subtraction or the difference operator, as well as the complement of a set. So these two would be new if you're interested in more. But next video, we're going to use these sets to talk about intervals. And we're going to graph these intervals on the real number line. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope to see you next time.